that as you're walking through woods, you might as well be dragging this behind you, as long as you know roughly where you're going and where you expect the hounds to be taken. Uh, when the hunt actually meets, as you'll no doubt see later on, the different tactics are involved with hollering and horn blowing, and also the use of anti-mate spray, which um, also is, is another um, product which helps to mask the scent of the hunted fox, which we'll be using today as well at certain stages, like uh, gate entrances and that sort of thing, where you expect the hounds to be taken. Going out in the early morning to lay a false trail for the hounds to follow is just the beginning of one day's work for the hunt saboteurs in Sussex. They are dedicated to saving the fox from the hunt, while the hunt is equally dedicated to its destruction. Both hunters and anti-hunters are convinced of the righteousness of their cause. Neither side begins to understand the outlook of the other. But however barbaric the hunt may seem to the saboteurs, they have the support of large numbers of country people, especially the farmers over whose land they ride. When the, when the hunt want to come here, they ring us up, they contact us, they say as far as possible where they're going to go and um, what they're going to do, and that's fine, and we're, we're organised for them. But when we get foot people climbing all over our fences, running through sheep, and we, we've had a disease problem on the farm, and we don't want it spread. The hunt know this, they've contacted us, and they've respected this. But then you get this lot out, there's nobody knows where the footpaths are. They say they've got maps, and you ask them for maps, and they haven't. They run around with these sprays. Um, you know, it's just not on. Has he got permission to go on? Yes, he's a friend of mine. He lives in the village. The Hunt Saboteurs are a committed organisation of young people who believe in their absolute right to prevent the death or suffering of animals whenever and wherever it occurs. The pop group aren't directly involved, but they're sympathetic. This is a benefit concert to help raise funds for the good work. Whatever the hunting fraternity may believe, the saboteurs are all volunteers. Some are students, some unemployed, some quite ordinary young working people. All of them freely give their own time and money for a crusade of quite extraordinary intensity. Well, good evening everybody. Thank you for turning up to this meeting. My name's Phil. I'm chairman of the local Hunt Saboteurs Association group. Now, as you're here, I presume that you're probably all opposed to blood sports anyway, but I'd like to just spend a few minutes talking about the case against blood sports and in particular against fox hunting. You must remember that the hunt is solely for sport. It's irrelevant whether the fox is a pest or not to a hunter. It's handy if he can make pretend the fox is a pest because then he can persuade a gullible public into believing that fox hunting is necessary. Hunters will sometimes claim that the fox is killed rapidly by the hound savaging it, breaking its neck or something like that. Well, you can see from this picture, this is all part of the fox. It's been disemboweled alive. I don't think under any stretch of the imagination can one assume that that wasn't a painful and particularly uncomfortable method of dying. Well, here's another one. It shows the fox a bit clearer. As you can see, the top half of the fox here hasn't been touched by the hounds. But the bottom end, he's just been torn to pieces. Now you can see the hunt riding away in the background. I suppose they don't really care too much. <laughs> During October, the hunt will be actually training the hounds to hunt rather than just to kill. But by November, we've got the opening meet. This is the big occasion for the hunt when the local press comes along and all the uh, average members of the public go along to pat the hounds. Well, at the opening meet, which is the beginning of the formal part of the hunting season, we'll generally go along and parade around with banners to try and put the other side of the case, particularly as there's likely to be press present. Now, we won't normally bother with uh, banners and demonstrations and things at hunts. It's only really at big occasions like the opening meet and on Boxing Day and other such occasions. Because clearly, if we do 
wave banners around and draw attention to ourselves, the hunt know we're there, and this clearly minimises the effect that we're likely to be able to have, because they'll take actions to try and uh, avoid our activities. Uh, as long as they do it quietly, don't upset anybody. I think anybody's entitled to their own views. I've got my own opinion about that. Your own opinion, sir, are you prepared to share it with us? Excuse me, madam. Yes. I wonder if you'd mind telling me what you feel about these young people who demonstrate against hunting. Well, in fact, I think that there's, there's nothing wrong in demonstrating as long as you do it passively. And I think on both sides, I think it's very wrong if, if uh, the huntsman or any members of the field, if they are in any, any way, um, you know, they, they raise their crops, as the press do say. But in fact, we have a very friendly lot of... Um, Aunties, as you call them out, and they're very nice and they open gates for us and they're very pleasant. So we normally get on with them very well. Thank you, and everyone's entitled to their own view anyway, aren't they? What do you feel about the hunters then, Andy? Well, I think they're scum. I think they're basically bloodthirsty scum. That's my opinion of them. I think, I think a lot of them, a lot of the, uh, the field, the whole of the hunt, uh, Quite a lot of them don't. I don't think they really realise what they're doing because a lot of them are just young girls from yeah, the age right. of about 12 to 16. They're brought up with it, aren't they? Yeah, and they've been, they've sort of been uh, brought up with the fact that hunting is it's a tradition, part of their yeah. life. And uh, I don't think at that sort of age, 12, 13, whatever, they're going to really realise what it all involves. But the older people, like the actual hunters, they know damn well what's going on. And I think they must, they should be much more civilised and reject it all because it's disgusting, it really is disgusting. Good morning. Morning. Three Fitzgeralds. Uh, quite honestly, I lack the words to tell you what I think of people who hunt. Um, I've seen them wearing RSPCA badges. It's, it's as contradictory as Myra Hindley wearing an NSPCC badge. It's, it's utterly ridiculous that, you know, these people often are in animal welfare groups. And, there just doesn't seem to be any sense in their attitude. I just can't understand how anybody in their right minds can behave in such a way. I really can't. I think they must be mad. They must be maniacs and sadists. I just don't know why people can possibly do this or say they derive any pleasure at all out of it. I just put it on a par with Hitler murdering Jews during the war. He must have enjoyed it, but he was mad. And I think the same applies to a lesser extent to the hunters. I don't mind what anybody does. They can risk themselves as much as they like. They can go riding around the countryside to their heart's content, as long as it's not bothering anybody else, as long as it's not damaging or destroying anything else. But the fact with hunting is that it is doing harm. It's not just out for a great ride. They're killing animals, they're torturing and slaughtering foxes, and that's what I'm against. We are a serious opposition to them. We do have an effect, and I think on certain, um, it, under certain circumstances, um, they see us as a real threat. You know, we are a great nuisance to them um, because we, we are effective. I think we aggravate them by being there, but they aggravate us too. To what extent do you feel that you have the right to break the law? I think most of the time there's no question of the law being broken. We don't actually do anything that does break the law as far as I see it. Um, we don't destroy any property or anything like that. That would be needless really. There's no need to go and destroy property to break down fences, things like that. All we do is try to put ourselves between the hunters and the fox. And that's not breaking any law that I've ever come across. OK, right. I'm the legal officer for the Hunt Saboteurs Association. I'm the person that you're supposed to be elected to tell you all this. One of the things that any of us are most likely to end up in court for is because we've actually been on the side just being there. Now, this ties up with the whole question of civil liberties, about whether people have the right to peacefully do something about that which is not right. 
Now, a breach of the peace, or an action likely to cause a breach of the peace, is likely to occur where at any meeting of people, your presence or their presence is likely to put somebody, whether it's you, them, or another person, in real fear, true fear, of physical injury to somebody. Now, it's never been argued in court that by being there, we are in real fear of physical injury by some silly person on a horse. But that's exactly what happens. But it's very, very rare that any member of the hunt is taken to court for breach of the peace. And it's usually only after they've done something far worse than that. But stabs are being taken to court for this all the time. Perhaps you don't realise that the police have all got you on file as being urban terrorists not connected with the IRA. So that gives a new insight into stabbing. We get accused of being Marxist anarchists, accused of being paid, given a lunchbox. We enjoy going out. I mean, in a way, that's true. I mean, if you're going to say something, it's enjoyable. But, I mean, that's, I mean, we get up unearthly times in the morning to get to places, you know, three o'clock in the mornings, four o'clock, five o'clock. We're out the whole day running around after these people around the country. Um, you know, most, no, it's 100% of the people aren't politically motivated at all. Hunting's been going on under both governments, so I don't think it's going to make much difference whoever's in power. And that goes for the extremist parties as well. I don't think that um, hunting really bothers them one way or another. So you're not against think. hunting because they're upper class people? Oh, good grief, no. A lot of them are working class. Well, maybe not the hunters so much, not the fellows in the red coats, but the hunt followers, the fellows with the dogs who send them down the holes to root out the fox or hare or whatever they're rooting out at the time. No, it's, I, I think it's um, something that cuts right across class boundaries. If you look at it practically, there's, there's absolutely no point in doing this sort of thing through political motivation. I mean, if you're an extreme left-winger, you're not going to, to get at the ruling classes by uh, sabotaging fox hunts. It's just nonsense. I mean, if you, if you take our case, for example, we, we even buy the Daily Telegraph every day. You can't get much more non-socialist than that. We've got a mortgage and, uh, goodness gracious, all these trappings of capitalist society. Uh, no, this is absolute nonsense about politically inspired. The saboteurs may not be politically inspired in the narrow sense, but they do share a common ideology. Most of them are vegans, and that doesn't just mean that they don't eat meat. As far as possible, they avoid animal products altogether, and that includes fish, eggs, butter and cheese. Instead, most of them subsist on health foods, wholemeal bread, brown rice and lentils. They also try to share a different philosophy about animals from the rest of us. To them, man and beast should be in partnership, without cruelty, without exploitation. Animals have as much right to life as human beings and as much right to happiness. So the hunt saboteurs are also opposed to the destruction of wildlife, to factory farming and to experiments on animals, and they use any means they can find to make their point. Hunting is just one aspect of our general attitude towards animals, as vivisection and meat-eating, all these sort of things. And hunting just seemed to be one particular aspect that we could do something positive about, and we could actually help to alleviate the cruelty that was going on against animals. When you say you could do something positive about it, what do you mean? Well, hopefully, if we're successful, we can actually save lives, uh, individual lives. It may be on a very small scale, but uh, our, our point of view is that the individual life matters. On a Saturday morning in November, the Sabs move into position close to a hunt meet at a village pub. Hi, Jane. Most of them are armed with aerosol sprays of a product designed to throw male dogs off the scent of a bitch on heat. Have you got any anti, mate? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Um, we spray it in front of the hounds because in case it gets in their eyes, so it does sting slightly, but it doesn't hurt too much, as I'll demonstrate. <laughs> You want to go down that road, and then you want to go, you know... It's the Maypole pub, isn't it? It's the Maypole, yeah, it's not far down there. OK, then. Right. Me and 
Dad, you, you want to get down there? You want to get down there quickly, because it's 11 o'clock. We'll come back, tell you which way they're gone, yeah. and then... What we might do is you might sort of just poodle down there just to, just to pick you up. Well, we'll walk down. Right. Ready? Mm -hmm. it's it's wander down well, if, you, if not too many of you go down, because if just those two do go down, then they... Yeah, you know, they'll see which way they move. Yeah. Yeah. It's not far down there. Although they had no advance warning, the hunt are already aware that the saboteurs are out. In an effort to outmaneuver the hunt, the Sabs have split into three groups. If they stop and draw cover fairly soon, we'll be the first ones there. If they get too far ahead of us, we'll send the drivers back to the vehicles and we'll, they'll take the vehicles around in front of us. Okay, so the drivers better be ready to come back here. But like I say, keep together and keep a distance away from the, from the hunt. Don't get too close, okay? If they're coming our way, obviously, we'll just bundle into the wood. If they're not, we'll have to come back probably to the cars and yeah. drive around. But it doesn't yeah. matter because we've got another group here and another group here. So whichever way they go, one group will be on them straight away. But I think we've got quite a good chance. They better make a move, really, because it's yeah. time's plodding on. But the plan has already gone wrong. The hunt have moved off early. Straight down. What, down towards that Tudor Rocks place? Down, the, well, you've walked down to about here, Yeah, they've carried you? on down the lane. Down the lane? Yeah, we don't know where they've turned off from there, but... Down there's the a lane. lot of distance to catch up by How many car. Is there? We've got to go by car. How many roads? How many riders? I couldn't really see, could, could you? you? No, we didn't Couldn't see any red coats because they were in the front, so we'd better get moving. Right, we'd better get moving then. Instead of drawing a cover close to the meet, the hunt have hired off in the one direction the Sabs fail to anticipate. So the hunters have to be hunted tracked down before the saboteurs can go into action. So we know exactly where they are, but we should be able to catch them as they come out. That's the way they'll cross. You look at the map, there's no way they're going to go down into Maresfield. That's, um, where are they now? We're, we're on this side, aren't we? No. no we're, we're on this side. That's it, that's it. We're up. They're in a sort of a square. There, where right? Brenda's pointing. That's Brenda's it. Pointing. Can you leave your car here then? Yeah. Well, where am I supposed to go? Well, you stay here for the mo. Yeah, you go right. You go back round the other side where we just come from. Go round and just have a look, and then Andy. come back here. Andy. Yeah. Right, do you want to get in, Captain? We'll see you in a minute. We're just To reach the hunt, the saboteurs have got to run across farmland, and this quickly arouses the anger, not just of the hunt themselves, but of those farmers who are in favour of fox hunting. Are you on a footpath? Yeah, over there! Are you I on a footpath there? Coming. Is that a footpath? Yeah, over there! Footpath, you can go in any direction from over there. Why don't you bugger off? It's the truth, isn't it? What? Give us loads of spiel about having to go up the road. Footpath over there! And you know it. You're talking too much. Come on. You're talking too much. Why are you saying you don't know this land? You don't even know it, do you? Why did you go away? Oh, yeah, you don't even Kind of keep to the road. There's no path here. There's no one over here. You're You're liking it, are you? Are you liking it, are you? Really? Will you now? Well, wait, how come you won't let us on the footpath? You are trespassing. We're not. We're not trespassing. You gave us that spiel before. It's all right, come on. Would you kindly get on the road? Get back I'll help on the road. Your neck at the same time. Come on, it's all right. You you we're getting on the back foot of the map. We're on the footpath over there. Come on, really? I'm not, I'm not bullshitting. They're yeah, bullshitting. Right. How's Windy Butchers over here going to carry on? Very well. Come on, it's okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I know. He's, he looks clever, but he's not. Come on. I have hunted foxes for a long, long time. I also farm. I don't know whether you've seen the damage foxes do. They take lambs, they take chickens. They don't live the way they used to live. They used to live in an area. One fox, one wife, they married for a lifetime, and 
one could control them that way. They'd now started packing. They live in semi-detached houses, if you like. They take the lambs, and the only other way of killing them is by snaring them. The illegal gin trap, the snare, or the shotgun. Well, and gas. you can gas them. Now, if you shoot them, and you don't kill them, that fox dies a terrible bloody death over about seven, eight months of gangrene and lead poisoning. This way, he gets killed, and he gets killed humanely. And it is the only way and the best way of catching foxes. That is the other side. This is the most humane way of killing a beautiful animal, and we all respect him. We all respect him. But you see, all the publicity, uh, the, the, these people are out for a day out to disrupt. It takes all sorts to make a world, but this is not only a pleasure for people having a day out on a horseback, but it is also, from the farmer's point of view, a very, very necessary occupation. Can you take that thing away from me now? Some farmers are opposed to hunting, and the saboteurs occasionally win the support of a landowner. But climbing over gates and fences tends to make them unpopular. The law of trespass allows them to cross private land, provided that they do no damage, carry no weapons, and leave by the shortest route as soon as the owner or his agent asks them to do so. And sometimes asking isn't quite the way it's put. By the time the sabs find the hunt, the farmer is already demanding that they get off his land. Most of the time, the mounted huntsmen ignore the saboteurs, but here, cavalry and infantry confront one another. What are you going to spray the roses or something? Oh, well, it's a good idea to spray the roses, but um, well, we thought we might spray the ground. Stay mm. what? I thought we might spray the ground to put our hands off. Oh, I see. Yeah. You're anti fox hunting? Yeah. We oh, well, that's yeah, fair enough. Then. Don't mind. Don't worry me a bit. Fair enough. Hunting may be cruel, but it's spectacular, and there's much that could be said in its favour, as a daring sport, a colourful tradition, as an active force for conservation in the countryside, but all this is lost on the saboteurs. Just as hunting people believe that the antis are from rent -a mob paid to disrupt by some anonymous and sinister organisation, so the saboteurs believe that the hunters are sadistic murderers, breeding foxes in order to kill them. There's bigotry on both sides, fuel for conflict wherever it occurs, utter opposition and mutual incomprehension. Powered by their convictions, the saboteurs go into action. The saboteurs are still ignored by the riders, but they're heading for trouble with the hunt supporters who follow the sport on foot. You're stupid. Look, Look I went today with a dog. And my dog was almost killed today. Right? I did not buy those. <laughs> I, you can't accuse me of yes, that. Yes, you right? did. My dog almost got killed by That's one right, of those. That's right, we seen do it, do we? Now, can I point out a couple of things, but as a personal level, so I don't... don't say that if anybody wants to fight you, I'll fight you if you want to fight. I'm just saying that with these chaps around here, oh, you know, I'll be down there somewhere. And of course you would, yeah. because you haven't got the nerve. We mean no, I'm, all but, on, you know, I'm a cat, I admit I've got yellow streak a mile wide, but you know, why should I have to stand up to you? All we're doing is trying to save a few animals, and all you can do is... Why do you set, why you set these set? up? I'm a vegetarian, mate. Would I go around setting snares? Probably. You're that low. I suppose I live in a council house and I'm only unemployed as well, Marxist or something. I don't know where you come from. <laughs> well, they're not being well, well, I think are they? Just they are, but it's perverted sadism. And get going. Yeah. It's, it's a sport that's taken place in the country. It's a sport that's taken place in the country for years and years and years. And it's a seasonalised murder. What are you doing about Northern Ireland and such? Well, what are you doing, doing, about, what are you doing about Northern Ireland? 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 Northern Ireland?
encouraging my children to enjoy the sports of the countryside, such as oh, throwing up fight and killing other people. Well, you can do things without killing other people or animals, like we do. Not we are not being destructive. We are saving lives, stopping them from being murdered horribly. What do you do that's so constructive then? How do you help people? Who really I am on need the help? local school PTA. I help the church. What do you do for the people who really need help? The homeless, so if you the help sick, the, church, how can the old. What do you do for them? Thou shalt not kill. Where does that come? From? I don't kill my fellow human beings. Ah, but thou shalt not kill doesn't mean just human beings. So it's all right to murder somebody that doesn't live up to your standards. How, how do you? You don't think animals have got rights? What do you eat? Quite well. Vegan. Yeah. Vegetarian. No animal stuff at all. You don't eat anything at all? No milk, no. eggs, cheese or anything. Vegan. You don't eat meat, drink milk? No. Oh, we don't have to kill. We don't have to... What's the word? Shit. Did you see with the hunt? You know them. They know us. They take a lot of trouble. And, and if anything goes wrong, we can pick up the phone in the evening and say, oh, there's a rail broken there or something like that, and they come and repair it the next day. But, I mean, if the fences are broken down, who do we know who to contact? They won't tell you where they come from. Where do you come from? I come from Titus. Pardon? Titus. And um, what organisation are you with? I'm with the rest of them, with the HSA. With the HSA? Which is the? Hunt Saboteurs. And where's your headquarters? In Saboteurs. I see. And who's your organiser? Um, a guy called Dave hmm. Wetton. Are you taking all this down? <laughs> and and where, where does he live? I have no idea. And so you come out willy-nilly, not knowing really no, what the organisation is It's quite, quite organised, really. And have you got but a map reason... with you? Yes, we have. We've and got you, plenty and, of maps. But why are you all over the well, farm the and not on the footpath? the we don't let you know is because if we probably let you know that we was going to be here, then you probably mm. cancel the hunt. Mm. So you know you're not wanted. And in spite of that, you come out and, and, and make yourself a nuisance all around the countryside. Not really. I don't really put it like that. Well, no, that's, what, that's the way we put it. You terrorise animals and then you tear them up after you've terrorised them. Have you seen, have you seen the fox following the hunt, behind the hunt? They don't follow because it, they run so away from it. They don't. They're so clever that they usually... The hunt has gone across the field and if you stand quietly back and watch, you see the fox gaily going across the field. You see field it going away from the hunt before it's torn up. Gaily being dug out so and have a shock put through it, really don't you, at the end of the day? All, all parts of the jolly fun, it's they do. It's all sport, that, though. It's not. It's a question of keeping them under control. It's not sport anymore. Hunting doesn't keep them under control, as well you know. Would you rather they were gagged? It doesn't keep them under control at all. Would you, you plant rather cover they so that they... How many foxes do oh, you account for in your six sport? Control doesn't Not come enough. into it. In his better animal husbandry. 9,000 out of 900,000. 1%. Thing it's chickens. just too you pathetic to argue that because foxes kill chickens, you should kill foxes. It's just too pathetic. Yes, but then you say you should shut our chickens up. But it's just and then, then you're, anti, you're, anti, just, you're just saying you're anti intensive farming, aren't you? Yes. But well, what are you going to do with the chickens? Leave them out and the foxes eat them, shut them up, and then you're cross it's about it. It's an unfortunate quirk of nature that foxes kill chickens. They don't kill all chickens. And if you didn't yeah. breed your foxes to kill chickens, then there wouldn't be too many foxes don't to kill breed chickens. Uh, a fox is a very natural animal, a very natural, he's got natural instincts. For you to go well, around killing. No, if, if, if he it's sees natural, a dog coming to the It's natural for woods, people to go around there. killing foxes, is it? For sport. Sport means it's natural. No, I don't think they do it for sport it's at barbaric. all. You do it just for the for whose benefit then, if it isn't for sport? They all look very happy riding around on oh, their that's horses. That's, that's, that's what they like. They like being yeah. out in the fresh like air and country. They're just and they bloody like barbaric. barbaric. No, they don't. They're not. They're the most gentle and people. Oh, they've all got animals. They they've love. all got animals. They've all got cats and dogs. Oh, oh how lovely. You just kill two to one. It's just trying very to come near you. Aren't they? They're very it's clever trying to animals. come near anybody. Well, they must be it's quite true. clever if they can escape it's from it's your lot sometimes. It's difficult to kill, to kill outright. Exactly. They? You've proved so that you, point very well, haven't so you? You chase it for four miles before you decide to kill it. Why don't you do it humanely? Why don't you do well, it with a bit of compassion? A way. You know, like gassing, if I had to say gassing, or shooting, yeah. I'd rather see a man take one sh yeah, clean shot instead of right. taking it four yeah, miles across can't. country and just harass it. Four miles, boy, don't or whatever, or so many miles across country, then find mm. its earth blocked up. That's sport, well, is I'm, it? And I'm that's not, fair. I'm, I'm just a farmer, and I think that this should, this should, should happen. It's a natural thing. Mm. Yeah, um, well, you know. <laughs> the hunt continued to play their part. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The saboteurs continue to play theirs.
But the game is about to take an uglier turn. A group of farm workers are determined to catch a few of the sabs on their own. Came under the viaduct there, took a look around, looking at the field, you know, this sort of thing. Decided to go back onto the road, and uh, these four gentlemen here came running across under the viaduct, uh, asked me to leave. I said, right, and I'm on my way, okay, don't want any trouble. Then bang, right in the mouth. And then they headed off down here to sort out a couple of other lads. And uh, unprovoked, totally unprovoked. We offered no, uh, offered no, um, you know, aggro to them. Uh, but it happens, you know. That's what they're like. Bloodlust. Anybody's blood. The fight is inconclusive, with both sides claiming a moral victory. As usual, the Sabs have a few honourable bumps and bruises, and the presence of the film cameras may have prevented anything more serious. On other occasions, many hunt saboteurs have ended up in hospital. The Sabs have also had one of their frequent brushes with the law. Please tip away our ante, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they do that? Dunno, dunno. Two guys uh, checking names and address. What's in your pockets? Tipped it. What reason did they give you? I dunno, I dunno. I don't think they gave any reason. Preventing a breach of the peace or something. It's pretty uh, minimal, you know. Name and, and a lot of people have got their anti-mate jumped out. Breach of the peace, that's it. Breach of the peace. Yeah, so lost a lot of anti-mate, but we hid off. We hid off. The saboteurs have had a hard day. Tired and bruised, they take consolation from the fact that the hunt haven't succeeded in catching a fox. But most of them know that they're nothing more than an irritant. It'll take more than aerosols and horn blowing to put a stop to fox hunting. Obviously, they go hunting and we're going to go saboteuring. We're going to, I'm going to keep that up as long until hunting's banned. And they're, going, they're probably, if they're really dedicated to what they're doing, are going to carry on hunting. So I don't think any amount of arguing is going to change each other's opinion of the fact we're just going to keep going and we're just going to go to the end. But we're going to go out every Saturday or as often as we can and try and help, help the hunted animal, whether it be a fox, a hare, whatever. I really don't like going out and getting wet and being uncomfortable and being hungry and cold and it's just miserable, it really is. I'd much rather have a lay-in on a Saturday morning after a week's work, go and do the shopping, pot around the town. That's what I'd like to do, but that's, I don't feel I can do that, so I go out and get wet and tired and cold and out of breath and just feel totally miserable at the end of a Saturday and not fit for anything on the Saturday evening. But. Uh, it's necessary. I've got a right to interfere because it's my wildlife just as much as it is their wildlife. I mean, you know, who, what right have they got to say that it's, it's their fox or it's uh, their hare that they're coursing or it's uh, their, hair, their deer that they're going to kill? I mean, you know, who's... who's the... <laughs> But they haven't bought the lives of the animals. A fox or whatever, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just not on, really. It's just not right.
jumps the tires so they can be prosecuted. One by one, over a thousand tires are painstakingly cleared from Devil's Dyke on the Sussex Downs. The dyke is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty and a site of special scientific interest. But that didn't